Victoria Junior School in Barrow in Furness, Cumbria, an innovative approach to pupil research is underway. Just over a year ago, the school began to pilot an after school researchers club, but what it's developed into has surprised everyone. I was invited to a presentation um, by some secondary students who'd been carrying out a research project and I was very impressed by the high level of the research skills and the um, information that they were able to provide in their final report and thought, I wonder if it would be possible to do this with primary age children. I contacted the Barrow Excellence Cluster to see whether there was any opportunity for children of our age to work with a researcher and fortunately uh, the opportunity came about to work with Katie Carr and so we decided to initiate the research as an after-school activity for our children. This pupil-led research project has been developed by the Barrow Excellence Cluster, which worked in partnership with Lancaster University to fund Katie Carr, a full-time researcher to work with all the schools in the local area. Tell me, what are you being asked to do? For me, the aim of pupil-led research is about pupil voice, so it's a way to enable the children to feed into the decisions which are going on in their school which affect their learning. Um, and through doing research and having an evidence base for what they're recommending, it means um, their decisions can be taken a lot more seriously. Today, the research club is starting a new project, which involves them teaching skills they have developed through the club onto school council members. The next stage of um, the work that we're doing is a whole new project, which is teaching other children how to be researchers. Now the idea of this challenge is that I would like the school council to be able to work with the senior managers in school and find out how we can refine the, the dining experience in school and also how we can um, improve the menus further. So your challenge is how to teach children who have had nothing to do with research how to use a research tool. Okay, so the first thing I'd like you to do is to have a look at your challenge sheet, read it through, and you're going to feed back to me exactly what it is that this challenge is going to incorporate. Okay, so a couple of minutes just reading quietly to yourself. Well, who can give me some feedback? Liam. Uh, we're going to teach the school council how to do a question how to do a questionnaire. Okay, so you're going to teach other children how to make a questionnaire. Okay, anything else this challenge says, Robbie? We've got until quarter past three. You have, okay. Hmm. What do you have to have by quarter past three? Robbie? Uh, a model questionnaire. A model questionnaire, okay. So now you've got 25 minutes to plan how you're going to teach a group of four school council reps all about what a quality questionnaire is about, what it needs to include, and to give them the experience of making one with you to find out about how to improve our school meal experience in school. Okay? Off you go. The research club begins its challenge by planning how they are going to deliver the lesson to the school council members. How would you use the good and the bad one? I'm going to put the um, bad one up first and then ask them what do you think's wrong with it. Okay. And then they're going to answer the questions and that and I'll, like, probably, we'll probably write it down. And then we'll put the good one up and see if they got it right and then if they, if they miss some stuff out we'll right. teach them that. That's fantastic. So you'll be checking, you'll be checking their understanding during the session. If they know anything about questionnaires. Brilliant. Excellent. Does everyone think that's a good idea? Yeah. Do you think you should do that at the beginning of the session or at the end? Beginning. Beginning. Because once they've seen a questionnaire and they've seen like the mistakes that they can't make, then they know that the things they've got to look out for. Brilliant. So has anyone got any other ideas on what they might have to include? Do you think we should read this out first? and give it to them as well. So give it to them and then we read it out. Mm -hmm. Then give them a questionnaire to fill out, the wrong one and the right one. Mm -hmm. Then they can decide what's wrong and what's right about mm -hmm. it. And then what they want to uh, like put like into the questionnaire, what mm -hmm. details and what they different want to find type, out. Different questions. OK, so how, how do you think is going to be the best way to find out from the school council what questions they want to ask? 
With the planning done, it's time for the researchers to deliver their lesson to the school council members. This group has decided that the best way to teach the council members how to make a questionnaire is to highlight what makes a bad one so they can avoid these mistakes when making their own. Okay, excellent. Now, Ravi and Kate got the bad one and Heather and Holly got the good one, right? So, and Rory, what are the bad pointers on the questionnaire? So what makes it bad? Well, it doesn't tell you, I what to do, either tick the boxes or underline the um, like what you think. Right, yeah. so go and highlight that if you want. Where would yeah, you like, put the instructions? Like up at the start, you, you put like, please, like tick the box or underline the option you would choose. What and else? You could put like, this is a questionnaire about recycling, please answer the following question. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> introduction, that's good. Yeah. Right, and then we also said like you could like put the question in red and then like the answer in red and that one in blue, so you know which question for which an which answer for which question. Right. Yeah. That's it. I think they Sorry. hope to um, ask a sample of every single class in the school to complete this survey about you know what they like about lunchtime, how it could be improved. Um, so all of the data from that can be brought back. And at a future lesson, the school council will learn how to analyse that data and write a report as a result. What started out as an after-school club has been quickly introduced into the everyday curriculum. Take this Year 5 class for example. They are now using research and data to back up their arguments in this parliamentary style debate. OK children, we've been recently talking about how we can research things and how we can use mathematical data and graphical representations of that data to help us in our research. So today we're going to have our parliamentary style debate about a question that Harrison and Kyle came up with. I think you boys decided what it is you wanted to research. Do you want to let us know, Carl, what the question is that you wanted to research? Um, does behaviour improvement improve behaviour in our school? For this debate, the children surveyed the children in the school to find out what they actually think of the school's behaviour improvement plan. What we are doing today is to see how behaviour improvement improves behaviour. Bobby. People don't like behaviour improvement because the teachers think that it makes them good pupils, but it doesn't because it just makes them angry. Thank you very much, Robbie. Behaviour improvement does improve behaviour because children who go in behaviour improvement realise it's not a good place to be and start being a good pupil. I think that um, we should stop behaviour improvement because some people are just getting angry and mad when they get in behaviour improvement. Instead of just teaching the children about graphs and telling them how they should be speaking and listening, we're handing it over to them. We're saying, what would you like to debate? So they come back with the subject there. They're very interested in the behaviour improvement system we have in Victoria Juniors and whether or not it's effective. So then we just give them a little guiding hand as to how they could represent that and the evidence they could use to back up their arguments and they take it away. I've noticed that the children have become a lot more independent. They've started to question things for themselves a lot more. In the past, they may have just sat in a lesson and waited for the teacher to tell them what to do and to an extent what to think. Now they're thinking for themselves. This is making lessons a lot more exciting and engaging. Hi, yeah, I'm just calling in to inquire whether the nutritionist could come into school. Okay, thanks a lot for your help. Bye. As any good researcher will know, interviewing is a fundamental part of the process. At Victoria Juniors, all the research club members are trained in interviewing techniques. Ms Fernan has asked the research team to help the school to review its approach, healthy eating. And we are interviewing staff and pupils to find out whether the menus and dining experience in school could be improved. With the interviewing, we've done quite a lot of interview training with them. So now they know how to interview teachers and other pupils. They know how to make people feel comfortable at the beginning of an interview. We've taught them how to write and ask open questions. And we've also helped them to understand how to try and get more information out of people who are perhaps a little nervous or haven't understood the question. So they can use prompts a lot and kind of ad lib as they go along. Can you think of any other ways that children's dining experience in general could be improved? Yeah, I think uh, getting the children more involved with the food, 
and also I think once you know what's in a, a meal you're more likely to try it so if we were to say lay out ingredients to show you what actually is in the curry at the end of the day you might think oh that that sounds okay yeah I'll try that do you think it's important for children to learn about healthy eating Yes, definitely. If we start them at this age, learning about healthy eating, hopefully they'll grow up to be young, healthy adults. And the final two stages is about reporting back. So they take all of their key messages from their data analysis and put it together in a report. And then um, if there is the opportunity to then report back by standing up and doing a presentation uh, about what they found out. So you did some work yesterday looking at what a quality presentation would look like. When we're preparing the children for presentations, uh, it's important that they have an understanding of what will be involved in a quality presentation. So what kind of things would the audience want to see? What kind of things will keep them engaged? To start off with, the children are asked to discuss what makes a quality presentation. Eye contact. Yeah, eye contact. Be friendly to your audience. They want us to stand up straight and keep our heads up. Yeah, and like don't wave hello to your parents and stuff like that. This is then fed back to the whole group to ensure everyone knows what a quality presentation looks like. If you've got like, um, not hard words, but like words that they won't understand, would you like try to explain them? Well, that's a good idea, isn't it? Perhaps you might alter the words that you use. We would then need to um, look at their actual presentation skills. So raising the quality of their voice for different audiences and awareness of how they would need to speak to different audiences, um, needing to project their voices, needing to make eye contact with the audience. And a lot of these things we would try and draw out from discussion with the children and then obviously put in any additional things that we feel are relevant. And what do you like best about working at Victoria Junior School? I think it's the thing that no two days are the same. Why I like doing research is it's like you develop lots of skills and you'll be able to use them in later life. Yeah, I didn't know what a questionnaire was or an interview. And then when we first learned about it, I was like, I won't be able to do this by myself. But then I did um, the group by myself and did the topic by myself and then I learned to do it. I think it's I think important to the young people to do it because then it's just like a normal lesson to them. Like we think as like researchers, well, not a lesson, but like a club, but if we did it as a lesson, then they'd learn more about it. I think I'm more confident at, like, reading aloud now because, like, before I used to, like, mumble and everything, but now I'm confident at it. I'd say to teachers and parents that say, say I'm a child and couldn't do this is that um, don't underestimate children, what children can do. I would have to laugh when people said that children at this age can't carry out research. They, they've proved that they can carry out research. They're carrying out research for government departments now and hopefully that's impacting on the quality of education that our children will receive in this country, so they most definitely can do it.